Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, I want to talk to you about ServiceNow's Innovation Lab Collaboration Calendar. That's right. Collaboration Calendar is a ServiceNow store app that you can use to expose calendars on your service portal. I've got it behind me just to remind you there's calendar functionality native to the platform. I even have another video on schedules and holidays and stuff like that, but this is a calendar report. But this isn't ex accessible to your end users. It's not something they can use on the portal to share and collaborate on. So here comes the collaboration calendar from ServiceNow. It is an innovation lab app, so I'll call your attention to that it is not supported. It has no warranties. You can't call high support if you have an issue with it. You're kind of on your own. But I think it's cool enough to share with you about what you can do. If you go to the store, store.servicenow.com, you can see the key features. I'm gonna show you the key features that I think are cool. And we'll start right now by just searching uh, for collaboration. Now, the install is pretty simple. You install it from the store. And uh, once you have it, you can go to this dashboard. And the default behavior, it goes to Employee Service Center. You can change which portal it actually goes to. It's a system property. And by default, there's no calendars automatically set up. Creating a calendar is really simple though. You can click, click the Create Calendar button and you'll get a little guided tour that'll walk you through how to actually do that. I'm your guided tour on this one, so we won't use that one. I'll give this a name and I'll just call this Holidays or Holiday Calendar or something like that, just to keep the example simple. I'll point out a couple of things. Notice you can change the time zones so you can have different calendars in different time zones. I'll just leave it as specific. You can change the color of the calendar, so if we want multiple colors. Um, we can set multiple categories per event by default, and we can say whether it's public or not, right? This is where it would be available to someone else on the portal if they come in. If we go next, we have different categories we can edit and recreate. So if I wanted to put one on here, uh, we'll just call it US Holidays instead of, um, and we'll cut the color as this color, and save that. And maybe I want um, UK Holidays as another option, and we'll just change a color on that. To that so I've got two categories you can get creative with the kind of categories click next here and then we can go in and change the default fields for that are actually going to show so you've got some basic setup out of the box things like the title start and stop uh, whether it's all day repeats like typical calendar stuff you'd expect right and then you can go ahead and create that calendar and now you can use that to collaborate with other people um, so this one got created it's now showing in the center here where we can actually see it and i can go add events to it so here in the u.s we just had labor day as a holiday so i should be able to go in and add for september the 5th a u.s holiday for uh, september the 5th so let's click on there we'll call this labor day and we'll make sure this is an all-day event, very similar to another one I did. We'll do U.S. Holidays. I'm going to set myself as the owner for the particular event, um, not that anybody owns a holiday. And then you can have a description and some comments, right? So this will be really important with what I'm going to show you next. So now I have a calendar that has some information on it. Um, it is color-coded, so if I wanted to add a U.K. holiday, I believe they had one um, the, the, day, the week before. Um, I'm sure they'll correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below, but uh, we'll just put UK holiday here and we'll set Abraham Lincoln as the owner of the UK holiday. That's a, a bit of a uh, mismatch there, but I like using him as my demo. Okay, so I've got a calendar. I've got two things set up. All of that looks good. Now, what I want to show you too is another use case that I know you've probably come across, and that is you may need calendars based on something that's already in service now. So it could be changes. Maybe there are changes that are scheduled. It could be projects, projects with go lives, projects with milestones. And you may wanna make that available publicly on the portal. So let's show you how to do that. I'm gonna call this the change calendar and I'm gonna uncheck the box to use the default table. So that's using the event table with this particular app. We're, not, we're gonna not use that. And I'm gonna set it to public just below that. So I'll highlight the field there. We are gonna make this calendar public. I'm gonna say the owner, Justin Meadows, and I'm gonna leave the color alone because I'm colorblind. But I will say for the source table for these events that are gonna appear on the table or on the calendar, I'm gonna look for change requests. So type in change request there, it took a second, there it comes up. And I do wanna add a condition because I don't want all the changes if they haven't been approved. So we'll just look for state and we'll just say is scheduled, right? So something that's in the scheduled state that usually means it's been approved. Now we get to define the title, event start, event end, the description and the comments 
from this particular table. So for changes, I'm probably gonna pull the short description for the title field. For the start date, we'll use plan start date. For the end date, we're gonna use plan end date, right? That's when we plan on starting and stopping that change. For the description, I'll use a description. And I thought about for the comments, what I might wanna use for the comments. Well, the change justification might be relevant to a business user that's logged in the portal and is looking at something and might wanna see, well, why is this change being made? So notice now in the back end system, I have a list of calendars. There's my holiday calendar that I created on the portal, and there's the change calendar that is created in the native UI there if I'm a fulfiller. So if I head back to my calendar dashboard, just click the refresh button, I should see two calendars now, one for change and one for the holiday calendar, just like you see there. Now there's some other functionality about sharing and giving other people permission and stuff like that. So all that cool permission and collaboration stuff you'd expect, but what just came out new in a really recent release of this application, in addition to that change calendar I just showed you, is this concept of a one view. So it'll take all the different calendars that you have access to and put them on one calendar, which you're seeing right here behind me. So in September, I have my two holidays, the UK holiday that I made and the US holiday that I made for Labor Day. But notice here on the left that we're also showing the change calendar. Now in my demo environment, I don't happen to have any changes scheduled at the moment, so I can go back a month or two. I think it was June, yeah. So June here, I got some changes showing up. So in theory, if I had a holiday that was also in June, I would see it on this particular calendar. And this applies to all kinds of calendars. So notice I've just got two here, but you saw how easy it was to create a calendar from scratch, how easy it was to create a calendar from a particular table in ServiceNow. So you can really go crazy and have a cool calendaring capability right there in your ServiceNow portal. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in calendaring in ServiceNow from the Service Portal. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.